All right, so today's video is going to be delving into some more complex topics of programming. It's going to be, as we get towards the end of the series, I think this is the third to last video, we're going to talk about more complicated topics that let you solve more complicated problems in programming, specifically the problem of sorting and other such pro or problem solving techniques. Today's video is going to be about the concept of using recursion to solve those problems. Now, this is going to be a little more in depth, and it's or not more in depth. It's going to be a little more complicated, uh, especially seeing as recursion is something that oftentimes takes a little bit of work to fully wrap your head around. Because when you start talking about recursion, when you start talking about things that run within things or functions which run within functions, which is how recursion is implemented, that it starts to get weird. Be especially because recursion can be very, very bad if done poorly, because it's very easy to get stuck in an infinite loop and get lost when you're a hundred layers down and you don't know what's wrong anymore, and even the debugger can't save you. But it's at the same time extremely useful because it simplifies a lot of code or something that would be a very complicated loop into just a single function call. So I do say that this is complicated and if you're not ready for it by all means take it slow and we're gonna work through this. Now the most common way that a factorial or ooh, recursion is explained is by using the factorial calculation. If you don't know what the factorial calculation is it's when you take a number and multiply it by each of its predecessors. So if you were to take, say, the number 5 and calculate its factorial, it would be uh, 5 times 4 times 3 times times 2 uh, times 2 uh, times, oh, I'm hitting caps lock, times 2 times 1. There we go. So that's how you'd calculate the factorial of 5. Now you can simplify this to a loop. So if I create a variable called sum, and I set that to be 1, I can say 4, a is greater than or equal to 1, a minus minus, sum times equals a, and then c out a. And if I run that, I get zero. Because I'm seeing out A, not sum. Try that again. There we go. So the factorial of 120 is, or the factorial of 5 is in fact 120. I can change this to be 3. And you get the factorial of 6, 3 times 2 times 1. And importantly, factorial of 0 should be 1. That's something useful to remember when doing this calculation, and it's important when you write the factorial code that 0 factorial does in fact equal 1. Uh, factorial is represented as the exclamation point in math. So instead of writing this for loop, I know that this is going to look simpler than what we're about to write, but for more complicated bits of code, the concept of recursion makes this a lot easier. So I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to write this function. Now, in order to understand recursion, you have to understand a bit from the previous lecture, the concept of the data structure stacks, because that is how function calls are made and stored in memory. Without wanting to get too in depth into it, you should just know that stacks are philo data structures, first in, last out. So if you don't remember that, brush up on that because we're going to be talking about it and it's going to make more sense when you look at the diagrams to see, oh yeah, that's why that's a stack. So to start with, we're going to say if a equals zero, I'm going to return one which is our base case, 0 factorial should be 1. Otherwise, I'm going to return 
a times factorial a minus 1. And there is the bit of recursion. I'm calling the function factorial within the definition of the function factorial. So this is where it gets weird. Now I'm going to step through this using the debugger so that you can see each call. But I have a diagram here which is going to demonstrate how this works. So you can see that by starting to call factorial 5, it calls 5 times factorial 4. I can zoom in a bit here it calls 5 times factorial 4, calls 4 times factorial 3, calls 3 times factorial 2, calls 2 times factorial 1. Uh, if I jump back to the code, once it's at that case of 1, or in our case 0, really doesn't matter, the end result is exactly the same, it starts unraveling. So you can see how the stack is being built. So first we push this function onto the stack, then we push this function onto the stack, this function onto the stack, this function onto the stack, and then this function onto the stack. And because this function was the last one to be pushed onto the stack, it gets popped off in that reverse order. So you get this incrementing, you get this summing effect throughout the stack when you pop each element off. And that's how recursion works. You're able to move further and further down layers, reducing the problem bit by bit until you're at the smallest, easiest part of the problem to solve and then working your way back up. That is the very, that is the very, it's the pinnacle. It is the very basics that is problem solving. You start from the very smallest, most simple thing to solve and then use that very simple thing to solve going back and back through more complex steps. It's how you learn to solve algebra problems. You solve one bit of it, which is the easiest part to solve, then you use that to solve other parts of the problem. And that's what this is doing. So it's hard to calculate the factorial of a very big number, so we start by reducing that number bit by bit. This is what makes sure it's not an infinite loop. I'm reducing the number I'm inputting into the next call of factorial by one. If I didn't do that, if I just put that in, it would run forever and ever and ever, and it would never stop. So if we test this, and I make A5, we should get 120. If I make this 3, we should get 6. We do. And importantly, if I put in 0, we should get... One. So let's put in three and let's look at this step by step through the debugger. Oh, I didn't build that first. That's uh, still received the three. Okay. So this is our first call to factorial. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that actually makes that a little easier. So our first call to factorial is putting in the variable three. Three does not equal zero, so we return. 3 times factorial 3 minus 1 or 2. So if uh, I go back to this, so we're right here, 3 times factorial 2. Oh, uh, there we go. That calls factorial, this time putting in 2. 2 does not equal 0, so this time we're returning 2 times factorial 2 minus 1 or 1, which calls this again. 1 does not equal 0, so this time we're returning 1 times factorial 1 minus 1 or 0. And because 0 equals 0, we return 1. So that gives us a, a. This is our previous stack. This is our previous call. So this would be 1 times 1. Jumping back another layer, this would be 2 times 1. And then jumping back the last layer, this would be 3 times 2. And that gives us, which it should have output, that gives us our output of 6. That gives us our factorial calculation. So that's how... That is how recursion works. That is how it is used to solve very complex problems by breaking it down to a very simple, very small problem and then working back up by using the function call stack. So you, you're you able to walk directly backwards. And again, that's a very key part of doing sorting problems, which we'll see in the next few videos. So this was recursion. Uh, how do I stop this? I just let it run out. So this was recursion. I 
understand if this was a bit complex, if this was a bit complicated for you to get your head around. Try running it with a few different numbers. Step through the debugger. Try writing your own recursion. Not something as complex as a factorial. Maybe something that just counts backwards so that you can see how the recursion works with a simple output. Just so that you can start to get your head around how you can use recursion. Because, again, it's going to be very important when we get into more complicated sorting techniques and later in later videos and different topics when we talk about different sorts of problem solving. So that is it for this lecture, and I will see you in the next video.